Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games. Today I want to show you how to make a fun sparkling grass lawn shader, complete with mow lines. It's done entirely in the shader graph, no texture is required at all. If you're new to my channel, hi, I make weekly game development tutorials, so subscribe and turn on notifications if that sounds cool to you. I also have a community discord server where we talk about game development. There's a link to it in the video description. I made this shader in Unity 2020.3 with Universal Render Pipeline 10.3.2. If you're using a newer version, check the video description for any fixes you should know about. To get started, set up the Universal Render Pipeline in your project. Create a shaders folder and open it with your file explorer. Create a new file named noise.hlsl then, go to the video description and copy the contents of the noise.hlsl file that I've linked there. It contains some noise functions that we'll need. I've adapted them from Totally Rania's code. Check out our tutorials, they're all great. Once that's done, create a new URP lit shader graph and open it. Let's start with the mow stripes. We can create these by manipulating a sine wave. Create a sine node. Now, for its input, create a UV node and multiply it with a stripe frequency property. To make things easier, multiply that with tau or 2 pi. Use a split node to get the U component and feed that into the sine node. Route the output into the base color node and see how it looks. In the scene editor, set up a simple scene, create a material, and apply it to a game object. It doesn't look bad, but mow lines usually aren't that smooth. We can clip off the sine wave extremes to help with that. Multiply the sine wave with a stripe clipping property and use a clamp node to bound it by negative one and one. Test this output and that's more what I'm looking for. The next step is to add color. Create three color attributes for the high, mid, and low colors corresponding to those positions on the sine wave. Remap the clipped sine value to range from negative one and one to zero and one. Now to split the color gradient around one half, create two more remap nodes, taking the top and bottom halves of the wave and expanding them to range between zero and one. Feed both through a saturate node to throw out values outside of the range. Now we can blend the colors using two lerp nodes. Feed the low and mid colors into the first, as well as the bottom half of the wave. Take the output and route it into the A field of the second LERP node. Fill the rest with the high color and the top half of the wave. And now we've made a three color gradient. To test it out, route it once again into the base color field of the master stack. Looks good, but we need to add some detail to make it actually look like grass. There's a type of noise called Voronoi noise, which produces these nice little angular cells. They kind of look like grass blades, right? Of course, you could use any texture you like for this, and a texture would probably be faster, but I'll stick with Voronoi noise for this tutorial. Our noise.hlsl file has a nice Voronoi generator that's tileable, so let's use that. Create a custom function node, set the type to file, the name to Voronoi noise, and the source to noise.hlsl. Then add two inputs, a vector3 value and a vector3 period, and three outputs, a float cell, a float random, and a float edge. Plug a UV node into the value input, and a new blade period float property into the period input. You'll notice that no matter what period you choose, 
The noise is far too large. We need to scale up the input values. I like to multiply the UV by the period property, but you could also use a different property if you like. Now we should stretch the noise a little bit so it looks more like grass blades. Add a split node to grab the U coordinate. Multiply it with a blade stretch float property and reform everything back into a vector 3. before feeding it into the Voronoi Noise custom function node. To make sure everything's working, route the random field into the base color field of the master stack. You should see a bunch of gray diamond shapes. Now, to merge this with our sign stripe, create a blend node, set to overwrite mode, and feed the remapped sign stripe into the base input. the Voronoi random output into the blend input, and a blade color blend property into the opacity. Feed the output into the color gradient remapping nodes. Reconnect the final color into the base color field of the master stack, and check out your work. That's starting to get somewhere. Now, let's move on to the normals. Mow lines form because the lawnmower pushes grass down in the direction that it moves, so normals will also be smushed along the mow direction. To compute that, multiply the clamped sign stripe by a normal blend float property. Then feed that into a vector3 node's Y field. This constructs a tangent space normal pointing along the surface's UV, V direction, which is parallel to the sign stripe. We don't want the normal to be completely flat, so set Z to 1. Normalize that vector, and feed it into a normal strength node, along with a normal strength property, to adjust the normal's appearance in the final material. Route the output into the master stack's fragment normal field. While you're there, make sure the fragment normal space is set to tangent space in graph settings. Save the asset and check it out in your scene. We should have the noise pattern affect the normals a bit. Take the Voronoi random output and remap it from 0 to 1 to negative 1 to 1. Then feed the sign stripe and this remapped noise into a blend node, again in overwrite mode with a blade normal blend property as the opacity. Feed that into the multiply node attached to the normal bend property. Save the asset and check it out. It's a subtle but nice looking effect. Now, I really want some of the grass blades to shine when they catch the sun. Let's make our own fake and exaggerated specular effect for that. First, we need to assign each blade a random normal vector. Create a custom function node, set the type to file, the name to rand1d to 3d, and the file to noise.hlsl. This function takes in one float, called value, and outputs a random vector 3, called out. Set value to the Voronoi noise random field. Remap this new random vector to range from 0 to 1 to negative 1 to 1. Now, I'd like the most stripes to also drag along these shine normals. Split the random normal vector and add its Y component to the output of the normal blend multiplication. Recombine everything into a vector 3 and normalize it. Finally, multiply that with a shine strength property. To compute whether this blade should shine or not, 
we need to see if the random vector is parallel with the view direction vector. Create a view direction node, set it to tangent space, and normalize it. Then, feed both vectors into a dot product node. This will return 1 if the vectors are parallel. Throw out all but the most parallel blades using a smooth step node, with a shine threshold property as the minimum edge. Multiply that with a shine color property. and route that into the emission field of your master stack. You can round out your graph with a few more tweaks. I added this smoothness property. And with that, we're done. The shader graph is a lot of fun to look at, I particularly enjoy how the most stripes make shine skip stripes and alternate when you turn around. I hope this shader finds a way into your projects. I'm always looking for interesting procedural materials to create, so please let me know if you have any ideas in the comments. I'd also love to see your creations. Feel free to post them or tag me on social media with them. Thanks so much for watching. I'd really appreciate it if you could like this video. It causes YouTube to recommend it more often, and it really helps me out. I want to take a second to plug my Patreon page. Don't feel pressured, you watching this video helps me a great deal already. But if you'd like to contribute, I have prepared some goodies. These include early access to videos, voting power on tutorial topic polls, downloadable project files, and more. Thank you patrons for all your support. Thanks again for watching, and make games.